It was the summer of 1967, just a few weeks after my high school graduation, when I took a um, random and very reckless dive into the shallow waters of the Chesapeake Bay. I remember my forehead thudded. I, I felt a thud against the sandy bottom, um, snapping my head back and crunching my fourth cervical vertebrae. I had severed my spinal cord. And back in the hospital, my doctor said, Johnny, you are gonna be paralyzed for the rest of your life without use of your hands or your legs. I said, what? I mean, come on, I was, I was young, athletic. I was heading off to college. This, this, this couldn't be happening. No, this isn't happening. But when the doctor's words um, slowly sank in, I became numb with disbelief. And with that, bitterness began to take root. And I, I hissed at heaven, saying, God, I, I can't live like this. I, I will not live like this. Now, I knew I could not end my life physically, and so I was tempted to end it uh, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. I told my mother to pull my bedroom drapes turn out the light and shut the door. And there in the darkness, I laid in bed for weeks. Behind that closed door, my self-pity literally became suffocating. I mean, dark, morbid thoughts were worse than my paralysis. And so somewhere along the line, into the dark, I whimpered, God, if I cannot die, then please show me how to live. It was the most feeble, faint-hearted prayer I had ever offered up, but um, it's all it took. Immediately, God put Christian friends in my life who opened the Bible to help me, you know, show me how to live. In its pages, I discovered precious insights and powerful promises. God had not abandoned me. The Lord had a purpose. This paralysis would not last forever and so many more promises. And over time, I have to say, I did not find all the answers to my plight, but I found the one who held all the answers. I found contentment in Jesus, the only answer that seemed to satisfy all my longings. It was around this time that a good friend, Steve Estes, shared 10 little words that literally changed my life. God permits what he hates to accomplish what he loves. Yeah, that's right. God permits all sorts of things he does not approve of, like, like how about the cross of his own dear son, Jesus? He hated what happened that day on Mount Calvary, but he permitted it to accomplish something that he loved, something that he prized even above the gruesome death of his own son. The something that he loved was salvation for a world of sinners like you and me. And so I learned to look at my spinal cord injury the exact same way. For God took no delight in my broken neck. He hates suffering, but through it, he accomplishes the lovely, quote, something that he was after, Christ in me, the hope of glory, just as it says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. And when I look back on those gloomy days in my bedroom, I am reminded that there is a world of other people with disabilities, many of whom will never have the chance to leave their bedrooms. And I understand in a way their agony and oh, how they need to see that Jesus is their answer too. And this is why at Johnny and Friends, we love declaring and demonstrating the good news of Jesus whenever and wherever we can because the plight of suffering people, it's so easy to ignore. And it is why Jesus commands us in Luke chapter 14 to quote, invite the poor, go out and find the crippled, the lame, the blind, do this and you will be blessed. Right there, Jesus is saying of all the people you might ignore or neglect, do not neglect people with disabilities. They need the love of Jesus in a huge way. 
That command in Luke chapter 14 is for me so very personal because my heart breaks to think that the suffering that people with disabilities endure here on earth may only be a dark omen of worse suffering to come in an eternity without Jesus Christ. So, at Johnny and Friends, we tell people with disabilities that sin kills, hell is real, but God is merciful. He can save you and Jesus is the way. Friend, countless thousands, millions of people with disabilities have yet to hear that astounding message and I cannot bear that they are being forgotten by others. But you know, even after I'm long gone to heaven, guess what? I know that Johnny and friends will never forget those people. Our teams will keep giving the hope-filled news that through Jesus Christ, the weak and the vulnerable can have a home in heaven, escape from hell, a purpose for living, and the power to be more than a conqueror. Woo. Yes, there are more important things in life than walking. There are more important things in life than having use of your hands. The most important thing in life is knowing that God has removed your heart of stone and given you a new heart because of his salvation. Oh, friend, help us keep giving the heart-transforming gospel of Jesus so that the world's weakest will gain a new heart in Christ. Thank you for not forgetting people like me, people with disabilities.